Hi, my name is Bai Xuan, and I'll be the teacher for today. And today we'll just be reviewing for contest three. So let's start. Okay, so the topics that will be covered in contest three are Boolean algebra in every single division, data structures that is in every division besides elementary, and then FSAs that is only in intermediate and senior, and regular expressions that is also only in intermediate and senior. So Boolean algebra, these are just fundamental identities that are necessary to solve some the problems. So the first one we have is the commutative law. And this means that the order of application of two separate terms is not important. So um, like this can be equal to this and this one can be equal to this one. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have the associative associative law, which means for grouping of the terms in an expression doesn't change the value of the expression. And again, it's like self-explanatory um, self because these operations are all the same. So we can use the associative law. And then the idempotent law is a term that is ORD or and it with itself is equal to the ter that term. So the plus sign means or and the multiply sign means and. So when you or something with themselves, it's the same. And if you answer something with themselves, it's the same. And then the annihilator law is a term that is ORD with one is one, a term that is anded with zero is zero. Again, this makes sense because get an OR is at least basically at least one is true. I mean, as when you or anything with one, no matter what it is, the one is true. So that it will return a true. And the same with and as long as you have a zero, it'll return false. So no matter what value this is, because this one is zero, it'll return zero. And the identity law is that a term or zero or anded with one will always be equal to that of selves because for or it'll return um one if at least one of the terms is one. So then we, we have zero here. If this one is one, it'll return one. And if this one is zero, it'll return zero. And same with and it's if both ones, if it has two ones, then it'll return a one. So if this is a one, it'll return a one. And if this is a zero, it'll return a zero. And the complement law is that a term ORD with its complement equals one, and a term ANDED with its complement equals zero. Because when we have a term or itself, no matter what this term is, like if this term is zero, then the complement is gonna be one. And if this term is one, the complement will be zero. So then when you add, or them together, it will always be one, no matter what, because there will always be one, one, and one, zero. And the same goes with and. No matter what the x is, if it's one or zero, the other one will be zero or one respect respectively. And then for and, as long as there's one, zero, it'll return zero. So no matter what, there will be a zero returned. So are there any questions about some, the fundamental identities of Boolean algebra? Okay, let's continue. So we have a couple more laws. So we have the absorptive law, which is complex expressions can be reduced to sim simpler ones by absorbing like terms. For example, if you have this expression, we can um, factor out an x, which means x times x plus y equals x. And the distributive law, it, is, it means it's okay to multiply out or factor an expression. Yeah, the not is the opposite of that thing. Okay, and then we can like multiply these all out. They're just foiling out here. And then... We have De Morgan's law, which means an and or, or and expression that is negated is equal to the and or of the negation of each term. So, um, it doesn't really make sense when we um just hear the definition, but here I can explain it. So we're oring an expression, 
and then the negation of this is equal to the um, individual elements, the negation of them, and it together. So um, not x or y is equal to not x times not y. And it can also be applied the opposite way. Not x and y will be equal to not x or not y. And then double negation is a term that is inverted twice is equal to the original term, which makes sense because it's not not itself. And then this is the relationship between XOR and exclu exclusive OR and exclusive NOR. We have um, exclusive NOR is equal to not exclusive OR, which is equal to X exclusive or not y is equal to not x ex exclusive or y um exclusive or it means that when we return um it will only return true if they're not the same so for example if we wrote a boolean like chart out for x and y I see your question. Okay. We have one zero 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 one one zero and one one. These are all the possibilities of X and Y. So exclusive or will only return true when they're not the same. So when they're both zero, it'll return false. When they're zero and one, it'll return true. When they're one and zero, it'll return true. But for one and one, it'll return um false. And then just like it said here exclusive nor is the opposite of exclusive or so that means that um x exclusive nor y will be equal to one zero zero one so it only returns when true when they're the same so does that help answer your question Um, so these are data structures. So for data structures, um, the first data structure that will be on the ACL cell competition will be a stack, which is last in first out, which um, means that when you, like for example, like a pancake, when you put one pancake on top, the top pancake is the one that's gonna be taken down. Like the first pancake will be last out after all the pancakes that were put um, before it. So operations that you can use on a stack are push, which adds an item on top of the stack, which is basically like adding another pancake on top. And then pop removes the top item from the stack. So pop is taking off the top pancake and returning this value. And if the stack is empty, it will return a special value nil. And then peak returns the current top element of the stack without removing it. And if the stack is empty, it'll also return nil. Are there any questions about stacks? Okay, let's continue. So Q are, Qs are first in, first out. So here in the picture, like when you, it's like when you're waiting in line at a grocery store, the first person to get in line will also be the first person that can check out and go. So then for first in, first out, we have operations of pushing or end queuing, which is adding an item to the end of the queue. So like a new person walking up in line and then popping or dequeuing removes the frontmost oldest item in the queue and returns it. So it'll be like the first person in line finishing their um, checking out their groceries and then peak returns the current frontmost element without removing it from the queue. And again, if the queue is empty, it'll return a special value nil. So next, another data structure that we have is a binary search tree. And a binary search tree is composed of nodes having three parts, information, a pointer to a left child, and a pointer to a right child. It has a property that the key to every node is always greater than or equal to the key of its left child and less than the key of its right child. So for example, in this um, 
binary search tree, the first letter we have is A. So the only possible um, left children that this um, node could have would be A's because no other letters are less than or equal to A. So then we have an A here. And then we see here we have M. And then because M is greater than A, and then we have E that's less than M and C is less than E. And then we have I that is greater than E, but it's less than M because it still counts as to the left as M. And then we have R that is greater than M and N that is less than R. Are there any questions about binary search trees? No, okay, let's continue. So next we have FSAs, and then we here's an example of an FSA. FSAs are basically like representation of like um, a kind of string that you could have. It's so in the above FSA there are three states. We have A, B, and C, which means and the first one is A, so we have to have an A, and then the next. You have to go through X to get to B. And then you can have an infinite number of X's that come after it. And then we have, because it continues to go back to B. And then we need, we must have one Y at least to get to C. So the only, yeah, C. Um, and the only way to get from A to B is by seeing letter X. And then once it's state B, we can do any number of X's or go through a Y. That will go to C, which is the final state. So then examples of strings that FSA this FSA will accept will be these strings, which makes sense because we first have to go through at least one X and we have any number of X's and then at least one Y. Okay, are there any questions about this? No, okay. So the order of precedence for regular expressions is the clean star, which is like this. And then we have concatenation and then union. So similar to standard algebra, parentheses can be used to group subgroup expressions. So for example, this one generates these ones. So the clean star applies to A only, but this one can generate these strings because the clean star applies to C, A in parentheses. Are there any questions about order of precedence? Okay, let's see. So these are just some identities in regular expressions. Okay. And these are the, the format or the syntax of regular expression um, regular expressions. So um, if you read these definitions, yeah, this is just the syntax. So like this one is alternatives. This one is the clean star. This one is the question mark, which means zero or one of the preceding element and the plus is one or more. And then the dot is a wild card. The bracket is any, um, it can be any letter that is inside the brackets. And then the caret was, is basically not. And then the parentheses will just define a sub expression. Okay. And that's it for review. So then I'll set up the Kahoot. I joined the Kahoot.
Um, can you guys please join the Kahoot? Um, the co coach should still be on the screen, so you guys should still be able to join. Okay, so this seems to be a difficult problem, so I'll try to explain it. Okay, so we have what the question was, was not A and A, B, parentheses, A, B plus not B. So because this is an and statement, we know that this part and this part both have to be one, right? So then we know that a must be zero so that not a is one. And then we know that the other part must also be one. So then um, it'll be, if we have a is zero here, b will be, a, b will be zero because a and b is zero if at least one term is zero. So then we know that not b has to be equal to um, 1. So not b must be also equal to 0. So then the correct answer will be 0, 0. Are there any questions about this? One doesn't work because, again, because a is 0, a, b will be 0. And if b was 1, 
the not b would be zero. So then zero times one is equal to zero or zero and zero. Does that kind of make sense? Um, it's zero because because we know a must be zero because an and statement, both um, parts of the expression must be equal to one to return one. And so we know that not a must be one. So a must be zero. And because a is zero, we know a b is zero. So we know b, not b must be one because we're adding them together. And if you add them together, it can be equal to one. So then B must be equal to um, zero. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, the answer must be one because it says which returns true and true is one and false is zero. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, so this one we seem to have counted one off. So for this question, we have how many ordered triples make a not b plus not a and b plus not c is equal to, equal to one basically or greater than one because if it's greater than or equal to one, it'll return true. So what we do is first I would expand this out because it's kind of difficult to figure it out without expanding it out. So we have a not b plus, remember we can use the distributive law, not a times b plus not a and not c is greater than or equal to one. So for this, I would just try to find all the cases that work and count them up. So first, I would just look at if A is equal to 1, how many cases could we have? So if A is equal to 1, then we have not B plus 0 plus 0 has to be greater than or equal to 1. And how did we get that? 
Well, we just plug one into this expression, right? So we have one here, which means that it's just not B because it's one times not B. And then um, not A is zero. So zero times B is zero no matter what B is. So this one is zero. And zero times not C is also zero. So then we notice that um, not B must be equal to one in order for this expression to be greater than or equal to one. So then we have B equals zero. So for this expression, we have A can be one, B is zero, and C can be anything because the value of C did not affect the outcome of our equation because A is one, so not A is zero. So not A times whatever C is will be equal to zero. So C can be either zero or one. And we use an asterisk to denote that it can be either anything. So then we have if A is equal to zero. If A is equal to zero, then we have this one will be zero. So zero and then plus B plus not C. So then we this one is greater than or equal to one. So that means that just at least one of each of these ones have to be um, one. So first, the first case is if B is one. So we have A is zero and B is one. Then C can be equal to either zero or one because as long as greater than or equal to one, then it will return um, true. So we have this case and we have zero one one the next case we have is um if zero is if um not c is equal to one then that means c is equal to zero right because not c would be one so then we again the value of b doesn't matter so we have um sorry yeah, zero, zero, zero. You have zero, 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 or zero, one, zero. But then we notice that we already chose a one up here. We already have zero, one up here before. So the, this one won't be taken into consideration. So what we have is um, two cases over here that work and three cases over here that work. And we add them up and there will be five cases in total. Are there any questions about this? No? Okay, then let's continue. Um, I don't, I think the seven might be a mistake. It should be just five, yeah. Sorry. I think it'll like give you a correct if you get at least one of them. I'm not sure how to get it. Okay. Remember, asterisk denotes zero or one. Um, 
But asterisk means zero or one. So for this question, we have the expression a times not b plus not c plus a, b, c. And we notice that we can factor in a out of all of this, right? Because it's equal to a times b, c. So then this is also equal to a times not b plus not c plus um bc so then we just have to make sure that this expression returns true so first we know that a must be equal to one because again in an and expression we need both parts of the expression to be equal to one so if a is one then now we need to figure out what values make the rest of this return true right so then we have um not b plus not c plus b c equals one. So let's just um, plug in some values of b to see what values of c we need. So first, if b is equal to zero, the value of c doesn't matter because in an or expression, which this is an or expression with three different um, parts of it, of if b is zero, then not b will be equal to one. And because at least one of the elements was one, the whole expression will turn one. So the value of c doesn't matter when b is zero. So c can be um, zero or one. And then if b is one, this value is zero. So then we need to take into consideration what will happen to c. So if b is one and c is zero, it will return true because um, this value will return one and then the whole expression will be true. And then if c is one, then this part of the expression will be true because b is one and b times c will be one times one, which is one. So then this entire expression will still be one if c is zero or one. So then since we know if b is zero, then C can be anything. And if B is one, then C can be anything. No matter if B is zero or one, C can still be zero or one. So then the answer will be one asterisk, asterisk. Are there any questions about this? No, okay, let's continue. Can you elaborate on your question of if it's an asterisk, can the value change the, the expression? Oh, if it's an asterisk, it must be this, like if it's an asterisk, it will be like zero the whole time or one the whole time throughout the expression. It can't be like zero for a certain part and one for the other part.
Okay, since this expression, most of you guys seem to have gotten it right. I think I can continue. Okay, so I'll explain this problem because it's kind of new. So I'll so then um you make up okay. So for this problem. It was, it was not KYP, sorry. I'll explain it right now. Okay, so for this problem we have, um, we need to draw a binary tree for Tokyo Olympics. The Olympics. So we just go from left to right. So first we have T in it. So the next letter will be O, and O is less than T because T comes in it after the elephant in the alphabet. So then we have O, and then K is less than O, so we'll still be going to the left. And then next we have Y, which will be going to the right because Y is greater than T. And then we have O, which will be... It should be to the left of O, but since there's already an element to the left of O, which that's K, it will be to the right of K because O is greater than K. And then we have another O and this one will go to the left of this O because again, um, for it goes to the left of an element, like the child will go to the left of its parent if it's less than or equal to parent so we have o over here yeah um the answer is i o s i think you got it backwards okay and then we have l and l is greater than k but less than um less than o so l will be going over here and then we have another y so it'll go to the left of y and then we have an M, which is greater than L, but less than M. I mean, less than O, so it'll go over here. 
And then we have um we have p which is less than less than t so it'll be going to the left of the tree but it's greater than o it comes after o so it'll go to the right of o so it'll be over here and then we have i which is less it's greater than k and wait i no it's sorry it's less than k so then it will go to the left of k and then we have c which is also less than i so it'll be going to the left of i and then we have s which is greater than s but it's less than t I and mean, greater than p but it's less than t so the s will go right here so then it's um what are the nodes at the depth of three so that means there's um three like lines like three connections after t so we have one two three so it'll be i O, because this one is also three away, and then S. So the answer is IOS, left to right. So the descendants are the number of vertices, not nodes, right? Like three descendants are measured. Three, what do you mean, like vertices versus nodes? Um, yeah, can you elaborate on your questions, your question? Oh, okay. Okay, so let's continue. This one seems to be easier. Can um stack should be more self-explanatory. We just push and pop and follow the instructions. So I won't go over this one. So find the number of nodes that only in one child.
for this um question, you're going to draw out the tree and then any node with one child means there's only one line connected to it. And since we're running it short on time, I just want to continue and because there's some questions I want to review. Okay, for this question, we have um, a Boolean expression. So we have not B times not A plus C times not um, B, C. So this one, whenever I see a any not over a whole expression, it always reminds me of De Morgan's law, which means that we can simplify it. So then remember, according to De Morgan's law, we have not A times, I mean, this will turn into not B times not A times not C, remember? Because Morgan's law is not an A plus C is equal to not A times not C is equal to not plus not B plus not C. Because this one will turn into that. And then it's asking for which ones make this expression true. How many order triplets make this true? So we have, um, for here, we have B can be, um, when B is zero, then C and A can be anything because, oh. Because this part will already return one. And then when C is zero, the same can be said for a and B. So then um so we only have a couple cases where false is returned. And those cases are um when B and C both don't equal to one. So that means that they're both one. And then if they're both one this one will be zero, this one will be zero, this one will be zero, this will be zero. So then this one, if A is zero or if A is one, it doesn't work. So then it'll be um two times two times two, which is eight minus the two cases that don't work, which is six. Are there any questions about this? No? Okay, let's continue.
Okay, so say we all are right. So for FSAs, we just look through the states and see if they work, and you just have to work through each ones. So just the podium. Good job, Roger, Catherine, and Daniel. A nice job in Fein Michia. So then that will be it for today. So thank you for coming. Thanks, goodbye.